Hey everybody, today I'm excited to take you on a journey through the rich history of Fort Selden. The United States Army Post used to stand right where Radium Springs, New Mexico is today. The story of Fort Selden is a real adventure. It all began as a simple campground along the El Camino Real de Tierra de Rento. Believe it or not, it even served as a Confederate Army camp back in 1861. Fast forward to 1865, the U.S. Army took control, establishing Fort Selden with the mission of protecting westward settlers from Native American raids. But as time went by and the American Civil War ended, the fort started falling apart. In the end, was abandoned in 1891. The decision to expand Fort Blick bliss and the lack of funds for repairs were major factors in its eventual abandonment. I just noticed the first sign out here. <laughs> we gotta see this. <laughs> so I have a walking tour here. And Site number one is just saying, notice the wonderful desert here. Home to many rattlesnakes, I'm sure. So, Mogollon people, the weather and environment in southern New Mexico present great challenges to the people who choose to make it their home. This was certainly true for the Mogollon people. These Native Americans lived in the region about 400 AD until the 1300s when their communities melted with Pueblo groups further north. Mongolian lived in earth and wood pit houses. Some of their pottery and other artifacts have been found here. Pit houses are shaped like domes dug into the ground. A central fire pit was used for cooking and heat. The Mongolian were foragers, but also depended on farming. Corns, beans, and squash were particularly vital to their diet. It's pretty cool. So right here it says Douglas MacArthur, Arthur MacArthur Jr., Captain Arthur MacArthur, Mary MacArthur. This set of officers' quarters was home to the MacArthur family from 1883 to 1886. And here are the, these are ruins of the officer quarters. So apparently this is what it looked like back in the day. And here's now. This is the post hospital. This is like other buildings of the fort, constructed of adobe, had a dirt floor and was heated by corner fireplaces. There were 10 beds. The post surgeon was often called upon to treat wounds that were the result of warfare with the Indians, sometimes the quarrels between troopers themselves. This is it. This is the Fort Bakery. Notice there was a sign, don't walk in the ruins. That was the first sign like that I've seen. So I guess I broke the rules in the beginning, but it certainly wasn't intentional. These are uh, regular barracks, and here's how it looked in 1886, and here's how it looks now.
This is the non-commissioned non officers' quarters, 1888. You can see by those metal struts, they need to do a lot to keep these things from completely disintegrating. These foundations are remnants of the post prison. The courtroom is at the top of the prison. This is the only two story building at the fort. The rooms to the north of the prison were the granary, quartermaster storehouse, carpenter, and blacksmith shops. So, different construction, not of adobe, but stone. The sculpture is the Sentinel, 1876, 9th and 10th Cavalry Sculptor, Ronaldo Rivera, donated by Representative William and Carol Porter. All right. Did you have any questions, sir? No, I'm good. I'm good. It's very interesting. So I'm not going to say much here. I just want you all to soak up these exhibits in the small, very nice museum here. Some of the artifacts, pottery, kitchen utensils. This looks like a list of soldiers that served here. Eighteen sixty five through eighteen ninety one. More artifacts, some interesting pictures. This represented a typical meal at the time. The original layout of the fort. And look at all these old bottles. It's pretty cool. Well, that's going to conclude today's video, and I hope you're all as fascinated about this history as I am. See you next time.